This is the town I love, a neighborhood of family and friends. You know how we do Southside Chicago, baby. Yes, baby. And right here at the heart of it all is where everyone comes together. The Barbershop. Hey, everybody. Welcome to What the Flick. I'm Matt Atchity. That's Christy Lemire and Alonzo Duraldi. Uh, we are here to talk about uh, Barbershop. The, the ne next cut. The next cut. Not the final cut. The, no, the no. third Barbershop movie, the fourth in the series. That's right. Don't forget Beauty Shop. If everybody forgets Beauty Shop. Uh, okay, so. How can we forget? How can you forget Beauty Shop? <laughs> All right, so Ice Cube is back as uh, Calvin, who is a uh, barber on the south side of Chicago. He has a shop that he inherited from his father. It's kind of a, a, a neighborhood meeting place. But the south side of Chicago, if you saw Spike Lee's Chirac, you know, is a not a safe place right now. And so the, um, the, the, the people who work at the shop are concerned that. Uh, they're, they're, you know, the things are happening in their neighborhood that they can't control. And closer to home, uh, Calvin has a son who is in high school who seems to also be falling in with gang members. And so he considers the possibility of uprooting the shop from its uh, longstanding uh, home to maybe move it to a safer place in the north side of Chicago. And um, they also consider the possibility of uh, starting a truce for 48 hours with free haircuts uh, in the hopes of <laughs> making the neighborhood calm down a bit. Who knows? Uh, take a look. What happened in the barbershop, Calvin? We used to come here to get away from women. Me and Angie, we was both struggling to keep our shops afloat. So we had to work together. Saved us both. I can't believe y'all put all that money on your heads and then don't be having the money for your rent. With this hair and this booty. Damn. It's like walking around with a black Amex. And I never get denied. Why y'all always got to take it there? <laughs> This neighborhood was always rough. But there's something different going on. Hey, shooting out there. I don't want to tie a virgin. Get your old ass down, man. I ain't getting down there. Take me too long to get back up. Meanwhile, we got to raise Jalen in this mess. You don't understand how dangerous it is out there. Y'all need anything? Y'all straight? We got to take our streets back. We put our minds together. We going to get some solutions. So much love for everybody in this neighborhood. Turn that up! Yeah, this is gonna be some of my best work. I bet you won't be talking back to his mama no more. <laughs> Give me <that> George Jefferson. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, they do a really tricky thing here very beautifully in that they root it in this absolute now reality of this violence. I mean, of course, these movies are jokey in the way they name check things and make pop culture references, but here it's it's important and it's relevant <laughs> and um, yeah, it would be a great double feature with Chirac <laughs> and the way they get to this, this topic from a couple of different angles. Um, but it's also funny and it's also warm and it also maintains that same sense of really comfortable, jovial community that makes these movies really singular. Yeah, the, I, I, I always, the, the barbershop movies always make me feel like I've watched like three episodes of a TV show, <laughs> you know, because they're very much kind of this sort of a workplace sitcom. Mm -hmm. And then because the barbershop has been sort of established as this kind of community meeting place, it allows for people to kind of go off on these sort of speechy tangents about, you know, the world as it is right now and how how black people are treated in America or whatever, you know, insert topic here. And it doesn't feel like it's just stopping for a sermon because this is a space where people have those conversations, you know. Um, but yeah, but it's it's charming, it's well acted, it's co-written by the guy who created Blackish. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of sort of, you know, while, while yeah, the, the overarching thing is sort of dealing with the Chicago South Side stuff, you get all these sort of interpersonal things like, um, you know, Common and Eve, their marriage is in trouble and Nicki Minaj is coming along to make more trouble. And That's the one part that didn't work for me in this movie. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm how like, come? I don't know, it just felt like wedged in melodrama and mm. it just felt like the whole movie would kind of grind to a halt when Nicki Minaj would hit on Common or Eve would get mad at him again for potentially cheating on her. It just it felt like a whole another movie. I, I don't know. I kind of I took that as sort of again the, the sort of TV thing. Like that's the B story, you know. <laughs> right. 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 And and I'd say the cinematographer shoots Nicki Minaj's ass like oh it's God. the monolith in two thousand one. <laughs> well, it is. It should put, get its own screen put, card. Put that on the poster. <laughs> uh, I I was really impressed with this movie. Uh, I, I you know yes it we look at the other barbershop movies and and you think of you know some of the other comedies that uh, that Ice Cube has done. And you know they they can be pretty light and pretty goofy, and this one kind of takes this unflinching look at kind of what's going on in Chicago and the rest of the country. And 
I felt like they did a really good job of striking the right balance. And you look like there's a lot of stuff in there that, you know, there's there are a certain amount of like these monologues that you're like, all right, here's the, you know, men versus women joke. And, mm -hmm. here's, you know, and some of that stuff doesn't hit. Some of that stuff is pretty funny. Um, you know, it does. It's got, you know, four or five different storylines going on. Um, but there's a lot more good than bad here. I, you know, the Eve and Common and Nicki Minaj thing, that worked for me. Okay. Um, watch for the middle of this movie where we realize, oh, holy shit, Common could dance. Um, that, was, <laughs> that was pretty cool. He's got um, some breaking moves from yeah, the day. He can, yeah. do. he can do everything. The, the storyline, and I can't remember the actors' names, but the, the one other barber and the woman the other bar, like two one of the ones working yeah. on the beauty shop side and one of the and the kid like the younger kid that's not the, like the younger barber the nerdy guy the nerdy one like oh, the kid who helps out at the barbershop no 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 no, no. The, the one that everybody calls corny yeah the, um, the, the nerdy his barber jared. That, I'll look jared, at that. yeah I'll look jared at that. that everybody thinks is gay like the way that got a little old <laughs> that got a little old but, <laughs> but then the way that that ended up paying off at the end like the the couple moments you get with him and the woman that he likes, yeah. I really liked. Yeah. And I thought, God, I want to see a movie about that relationship. Like there's, it's, it's, and look, like this movie is very episodic, right? Yeah. But when it works, you know, and that one in particular, but a lot of them, like there's this real kind of warmth to them and, and it's not sweet all around, but there's a warmth and kind of, it earns that level of emotion so that when it's dealing with the violence in Southside Chicago and the decisions that Calvin is making, like does, does he need to move out of that neighborhood? for the safety of his family and the argument that he has with the rest of his staff, like, I felt that was earned. I mean, yeah, you're right. There's, there's definitely more good than bad here, and there are some absolutely some moments that really land. There were a few things that kind of, you know, like, they, there is a, there's something that happens in the first five minutes of the movie that is so much a setup for something terrible that's going to happen later. Like, yes. there might as well be, like, a big red neon sign on it. And also the notion that, you know, fine, if, if Calvin wants to move out of the neighborhood and put his kid into Catholic school, that's his family and he needs to deal with that. But it's been established that he now co-owns the barbershop with Angie, who's played by... Um, by No, 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 no. Sorry. No, Regina. by Regina, Regina Hall. Hall. Yes, I'm sorry. And he wants to up and move the whole thing to another part of town without consulting right. her at all. And when she finds out about it, she's mad for 30 seconds. Well... And it's like, wait, no, wait. Th like the, the, By the rules of this movie and, and the characters as they're set up, y'all are really blithely like ignoring this stuff. It's a busy and, weekend. There's a lot going on. It is weekend. a busy weekend, grant you. But it just... <laughs> but it, but there's, there is, an, I think, an underlying tone of like, the dudes in this movie get away with way more than, than the women should allow them to, especially since so many of these women are being presented as such strong characters and so smart about yeah. gender relationships. Lamorne Morris yeah, is Jared very and funny. Margot Bingham is Brie. Yes, very yeah, good. Yeah, I really liked those characters and I wanted to see more of them. Um, the, you know, the the Indian haircutter I thought was funny. Yeah, he was funny. I, like Regina ready. Hall, the couple of scenes, like she Lukash gets... Karsh M. Ambukar, yeah, Raja. Yeah, I mean, one of the challenges I think not of a nearly like enough is, Regina Hall. There's never enough Regina well, Hall for right. me. Right, I'm anything. sorry. Jasmine Lewis is Jennifer. No, I'm so I'm so confused. No, that's the wife. <laughs> okay. It's an I'm ensemble. Sorry. There's it's a lot of people. Of people and so my point is, this is an entertainer. We should mention him. Of course, right. he and is hokey, but in a funny way. Yeah. There's he, so many people solid. in this that that some of the characters you kind of you know, and and maybe this is a good thing. Like they do leave you wanting more. Like I wanted to see more Regina Hall. I wanted to see more Cedric. Like there's. So, when you do a movie and you're trying to keep it under two hours, at some point people are going to get short shrift, and and that's unfortunate. I'd rather have that though than this be a two and a half, three hour movie where it just goes too right. many places. And there are multiple endings. There are multiple right. endings, yeah. but I think that you know, apart from some of the distraction that happens with some of the kind of monologuey bits. I felt like this really worked. You know, I, you know, the Anthony Anderson story, like that's kind of distracting. Yeah, I see that's that, like, drafted on. Hey, you got to bring Anthony back because mm -hmm. he's got the hot show and he was in the first couple of movies. So, look, I get it, but it's it's, you know, alternately, like there's this movie is a little overblown in places and could be tightened up, and yet there's other things that I wish they would have focused on rather sure. than some of the dross in here. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I think this movie really works, and I liked it a lot. Yeah, no, I, I had a great time. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's it's a fun sit, and I think. You know, I like movies that put me into places that I wouldn't ordinarily hang out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I 
don't go to the all black barber shop. <laughs> maybe you should start. Maybe I should start, but you know, I like hanging out with the people in this one and hearing right. what they had to say. It yeah. was funny. No, it's yeah, it's a good balance of it's funny, but then also the the outrage and the genuine emotion are earned as well. So, um, what is your number then? Matt, uh, I give it a 7. Okay. I think it's great. 6.8. I'm saying 6.3, uh, so our average is 6.7, and it is where? It's uh, 81 on the tomato meter right now. It's also really profane, and there's a lot of jokes about dick size and masturbation, so don't take your six-year-old. Bye. Bye. Someone else did. <laughs> I couldn't get a babysitter. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>